Welcome to my Cisco's Scaling Network. This is the third installment of the CCNA material. This is chapter one, an intro back to scaling networks. In reality, it's more of a, let's talk about basic switching. So we're gonna do a implement, uh, implementation of a network design, selecting the appropriate network devices. We're gonna look at the hierarchy model. We're gonna review the hierarchy model look at the different types of switches and routers for small to medium businesses, and some basic settings on a Cisco iOS type device. Okay, so first of all, why do we need a hierarchy model? A big part of this is so that we can grow quicker. One of the problems is you don't wanna to have to redesign your network after every attempt. Like you add a new piece of equipment, we have to redesign the network. You wanna make your network where you can grow and you can grow easier. Part of that growth deals with things like supporting critical applications, the key applications that run your business and how network changes may affect those applications, network traffic, also the being able to meet your business needs. That's been a huge part. We've been actually working with one client right now where the network traffic and their network uh, definition for our key applications, it's been horrible. We came in as the third party vendor. Their first group actually designed their network in such a horrible way, it did not grow well. And so basically they had been growing using this old architecture that didn't really fit very well. So, we actually are in the process of doing a complete redesign of everything, keeping in mind the bandwidth needed for applications, uh, time sensitivity for applications. We're looking at their business needs to kind of help drive the justification of what class of switch and uh, better management. Cause that's been a, a big thing is, well, how, how much traffic is going through this port? We have no idea. It's like, but maybe we want to look at that. So enterprise uh, business devices, you're gonna have things like data centers or in service blocks and customer edges and um, providers edges, things of that nature. The hierarchy design, which we've discussed in other courses is the three switch tiered model, a core layer, distribution layer and access layer. This is slightly different from the data center track because in the data center track, they're gonna show you a different hierarchy, but that's gonna be the hierarchy at the data center. For a typical switch design, everything is gonna be core distribution and access. And a big thing here is, again, functionality. Are you gonna put a thousand dollar switch for an access layer switch? Well, maybe. What does it have that other switches may or may not have? Are you gonna put a $40,000 switch as an access layer switch? Mm, probably not. That's probably gonna be a core layer switch more than likely. But again, it goes back to your needs. The enterprise architecture, again, things like campus edges and enterprise edges, uh, remote connections and all of the appropriate edges. The edge of the network will be when it's leaving your network. So we have an enterprise or a campus edge. We have a service provider's edge, because again, we don't care how the data flows through our service provider, as long as it goes through it. We have a few things called failure domains, and these are areas of the network that would directly impact the network. So it will impact when a critical device or service may experience a problem that will lead to a failure in the network. Uh, you can work on reducing the likelihood of failures, things like redundant links, uh, by doing smaller failure domains. That way they can actually help kind of reduce or limit the impact of that failure. Also with this failure, the smaller failure domains makes it easier to troubleshoot. Also switch block deployments where every switch block acts as an independent uh, function of one another. It's 
So the design of scalability, a big part here is again, that desire or that ability, not so much a desire, but the ability to grow. This includes things like designing it uh, in such a modular way. So here we can have wiring closets that may wire back to a distribution zone or even a core. And again, you'll notice we don't have a single link. We have two links, we have dual links. We've talked about things like increasing the appropriate bandwidth. This is ether channel. This is actually chapter three material, but I mean, there's a way to bond links together. So we have additional bandwidth. We have the ability to expand the access layer, maybe by adding wireless to it. We have the ability to kind of help separate the layer three domain by fine tuning the different routing protocols. All right, let's talk about selecting the appropriate type of device. First, let's talk about the switch platforms. Also, factors. The switch, is it gonna be a fixed port? Is it gonna be modular, meaning you can add and remove as needed? Is it gonna be stackable? Meaning we can stack several of them and have them mimic what we need. Are they going to be non-stackable? A traditional access layer switch is a non-stackable fixed switch because they're cheap. Where a distribution or core layer switch or even data center based switches will probably be more modular and possibly stackable. Next, how do we manage them? Can we do cloud-based? Can we do virtual? Can we do just a traditional hardwire connection? Sure, all depends on what you want to pay for. A big concept here is the additional features cost money. So what features do you want? It's gonna be based off of how much money you wanna pay. Another huge part is gonna be port density. How many ports do you need? Do you need one port? Do you need 20 ports? Do you need 24 ports? Do you need 48 ports? Do you need a thousand ports? Based off of this will be based off of what type of switch you're going to get. For example, if you need 500 ports, you're probably gonna go with a higher end modular switch that can have one device that has all thousand plus ports. If you need 20 ports, you're not gonna go with a 16 port switch, you're probably gonna go with a 24 port switch. So port density does come into play here. Also, you calculate a lot of the cost of the switch based off of a per port method. It's a 24 port switch, it costs $200. 200 divided by 24, that's your cost per port. That way you can take, you know, a $20,000 switch that may have thousand ports and you can break it down. Next is things like forwarding rates. How fast can the switch forward traffic? Well, typically everything is in full duplex, sending and receiving. So the switch, if it's a 24 port switch, it should be able to process 24 gigs of traffic. If it's a 48 port switch, again, it should be able to process 48 gigs of traffic. If the switch cannot operate where every link is running at 100%, then it may not be a switch for your environment. We have things like power over ethernet, and this is going to be where the switch is providing power over that ethernet connection. That's gonna be things such as being able to power a phone or being able to power an access point through a switch. We also have the ability to do, to do what's called PoE pass-through, meaning we can put power on certain ports and it will pass it through to a different link. Again, thus allowing uh, PoE to be ran through certain switches. We also have what's called multi-layer switches. We have layer two and layer three switches. Is it gonna operate by MAC address or IP address? So that kind of comes into play. We also have different types of routers. 
And the nice thing here is there's different types of routing uh, requirements. Interconnection of multiple sites through um, maybe an ISP. We may need VPN technology. We may need the ability to do redundant paths or redundant ISPs. Or could also be just the ability to translate between different routing protocols. Three major categories for routers, branch, network edge, and service provider. Again, it goes back to how much you want to spend. More often than not, we're dealing with branch and network edge. Very rarely do we ever deal with service provider. Service provider routers are like a thousand times more expensive. Uh, I've seen one service provider router and it was like a, it was a million plus dollar router. And it's like, uh, I'm probably not gonna be able to play with that very often because again, they're not something that companies just pick up. It's normally something that someone's gonna pick up and install and then not configure on a regular basis. So again, most people are gonna be dealing with the branch and network edge. So again, just like with switches, we have fixed configurations or we have module configurations. More often than not, we're dealing with like the 1800 and 2800. And then as we need additional ports, we may, or additional features, we go up 3800, 4800 and so forth. Right now they're showing the 7600 and the 6500 series as higher. Though this has already been surpassed. There's newer switches out there, newer routers out there. The 1900, the 2900 and so forth. But again, the concept still is the same. One of the last major big things we have to talk about is management of the devices. Like how do we deal with licensing? Here we have different families of iOS software. And this kind of gives you the ability to see the time frame and to show you the licensing and the breakdown of it. Here we have a release software of 15. So we have 15, then we may have major releases, so 15 dot, the major release, and all of the sub-releases may be in brackets. Don't worry, we have the last chapter in this course deals with licensing. We have in-band and out-of-band management. Out-of-band management may actually be a console port or a remote connection to your physical device. Where in-band configuration or in-band management may also be connecting directly to through the network to manage that device. In-band, you could use things like Telnet or SSH or HTTP. HTTP. Out-of-band may be things like using the console port or the aux port or the terminal emulation which is kind of similar to Telnet, but I'm not going to go there. Basic commands, things like the enable, the line console, password encryption, banners. Basic show commands this is all the review from our previous class. The appropriate show commands so that you can see uh, routing uh, configuration or routing protocols like show IP protocol, IP route, the appropriate OSPF and the IGRP show commands. Basic switch commands, again, very similar. VLANs, um, gateways, port security. Again, basic switch commands for port security, MAC address, things of that nature. And that's actually the end of this chapter. Again, pay attention to the hierarchy, the enterprise architecture, uh, understanding how to identify mission critical components, redundancy, and that's the end of this chapter. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.